The Evercade, if you haven't heard of it before, is a handheld console which was released in the year 2020 by UK-based Blaze Entertainment. Its premise is that it's a cheap portable console which uses cartridges and that each cartridge released will feature a collection of games from past consoles in the arcade. We'll do a review of the console separately as there are a lot of things to go over about the handheld itself. But for today, we'll be reviewing the Namco Museum Collection Volume 1 cartridge. The Namco Collection features 11 games from the arcade in 8 and 16-bit generations. The selection of games featured includes heavy hitters such as Pac-Man, Galaxian and Dig Dug, and also lesser known games such as Battle Cars and Metal Marines. Rounding out the list of the games is Libble Rabble, Mappy, Mappy Kids, Quad Challenge, Starluster, and Xevious, if I'm saying that correct. It's a good mix of games, so that if you were to take out your Evercade for a nostalgia fest on a plane or a train journey, for example, you'd have enough variety to keep you entertained for the duration. With the benefits of variety come that they have clearly been selective to give you some classics and some filler. The fact that this is a launch title for the Evercade and is named Namco Museum Collection 1 showed that they also wanted you to have to buy collection number two. Still, as it is, the Evercade cartridges are only about £15 a pop, and you can get the Evercade bundle online that comes with the first ten cartridge collections. To give an overview and thoughts on each of the games included, the obvious big one here is Pac-Man. A simple game where you control the famous pizza dude missing a slice as you go around a maze and eat pellets whilst avoiding the ghosts. If you can manage to get to one of four power pellets, then you are able to turn the tables on the ghosts and can chase and eat them for a limited time. Pac-Man is genuinely one of the most addictive and replayable games of all time, and is just as fun to pick up and play today as it was back in the day. Similar to other games of the era such as Space Invaders or Donkey Kong, the game just loops over and over again, with the enemies and the challenge increasing ever so slightly each time. The goal here is to keep playing and get a better score. So if you get into it, you can find yourself playing for long stretches and try to beat your high score. But in most cases, this will just be a short, fun distraction where you'll figure, eh, why not play Pac-Man for 10 minutes here or there? Next up, we have Galaxians, which is a Space Invaders-like shooter. It's a very similar game with more colourful graphics and that the invading aliens are more bug-like and will fly in more surprising patterns. Another classic which fits into the fun for a 10 minute blast here or there, but may leave you wanting to look to the next game to play quite quickly. This isn't a bad thing though, it's just the nature of the arcade games from the era, where they were mostly designed to be played in short bursts before heading to the next game while still being addictive enough so that you'd want to come back and play it another time to try to beat your high score. Battle Cars was the game I played next, and although it was one I'd never heard of, it was one I instantly enjoyed and felt was easily a very likeable game. For full disclosure, the length of time I gave each game varied based on how much it gripped me and whether I had already played the game to death in the past. I played Pac-Man for maybe 25 minutes, and my impression of it was that there was Pac-Man all present and correct. So I didn't feel the need to attempt to get to level 256 to see if there is a kill screen where the game just breaks. Battle Cars is a Mode 7 style racing game which feels a little bit like Mario Kart mixed with Mad Max. You can choose from a variety of cars in a variety of colours and then you get to shoot projectiles at your opponents as you race around. You can also earn cash to upgrade vehicles and the gameplay is easy to pick up and it, yeah it's a lot of fun. When I first started playing, I attempted to slide with the shoulder buttons like you can do on other races, and I didn't realise that you can actually use the shoulder buttons for general turning, which meant that I was overturning quite a lot. But then, once I realised this, I actually did prefer to play the game with the shoulder buttons to control the turning. Not that many games allow you to do that, and it, it felt quite good. A little bit like a steering wheel, but not, not quite. It's a good little racing game, it's, it's not a Mario Kart beater by any stretch of the imagination, but definitely a fun game to switch to and to mix up your play sessions on the Evercade. Along with Battle Cars, the other racing game in the collection is Quad Challenge, which I didn't especially get into. It wasn't as pick up and play fun as the other game, 
and I did feel like as if I made a single mistake that the race was all but over. It's a shame when you feel this way in a racing game as it quickly becomes frustrating. I'm sure if I play it a lot more I'll get more into it, and the game does have fun gameplay and the graphics are good for its era. Dig Dug is our next game and it was a fun game which is another classic which fans of games like Mr Driller or Boulder Dash will get a lot out of. It's a simple concept where you control a character who digs through the earth and you have to clear the screen of baddies by either dropping boulders on their heads or shooting a rod into them and inflating them until they explode. Now I'm not as familiar with the lore of Dig Dug so if anyone can explain that process better than me well, good for you. But to me, it looks like you inflate your enemies to death. This is a game which isn't quite as addictive as Pac-Man, but it's one that you'll happily go back to again and again just to see how far you can get. And one of the great things about the Evercade is it has a built-in save state feature, so you can easily save your progress and periodically come back to the game and continue where you left off without having to start from scratch again. Libble Rabble is a game I'd never heard of before, and it's a bit of an oddity. I played the game with the Evercade connected to my TV via HDMI, and I'm not sure why, but no sound would come through. Technical issues aside, the game sees you control two connected arrows, which are tethered together, and you have to move them around the screen to create shapes by hooking the tether around the pegs. If you complete the shape by closing the gap between the triangle and the tether, you seem to collect any treasure and kill any bad guys inside the shape. It's surprisingly fun, but I didn't 100% understand all of what I was supposed to do or learn all of the tactics just yet. This will definitely be a game I plan to put more time into and can see it being an addictive puzzler. One thing that jumped out to me is that on the game selection screen, the game is advertised as an 8-bit action puzzler. But the accompanying artwork shows a Super Nintendo controller, which is obviously a 16-bit machine. Upon investigation, I learned that it had been a 1983 arcade game, but was only released on the Super Nintendo in 1994. This being the case, it's a shame that they didn't update the graphics of the game to 16-bit standards, as whilst it's a fun-to-play game, and nowadays people are a lot more accepting of retro graphics in modern games, I get the sense that this would have been a much more noteworthy franchise if it had been modernised graphically during the SNES era. Mappy is a platformer where you play as a mouse who goes around a house trying to avoid cats whilst trying to collect all kinds of loot. Stealing TVs and paintings, almost like a Robin Hood, stealing from the cats as an ironic cat burglar. Gameplay is okay but repetitive and truthfully slightly frustrating. You can only jump by landing on trampolines and if you are touched by a cat you instantly lose a life. This means you can often find yourself bouncing on a trampoline repeatedly just to dodge a cat and wait for the timing to land and enter a room. You can get used to it quick enough, but it isn't really a gameplay style that would be chosen in more modern times, and it does feel dated. Mappy Kids, on the other hand, is the sequel and it instantly feels like a much more modern game than Mappy, but it really, really changes things up significantly. The style goes from an old school, almost Mario Bros style affair to a slightly more modern Super Mario Bros 3 game. So you can now jump and jumping on this game feels a bit odd to be truthful. It's like your character is too light and they float up and down at a weird rate. You can tap the jump button to rotate your tail and float more, a bit like the Tanuki suit or Tails in Sonic. Um, and unlike the first Mappy game, you can also fight and kick the cats, which is which is which feels like redemption after the first game. After reaching the end goals of each level, you'll enter a fruit machine bonus stage, followed by another competitive mini-game. There are various mini-games throughout, like Waving Flags, Simon Says Style, and one based on sumo wrestling, and yeah, they vary in quality. The next game on the cart is Metal Marines, which is a real-time strategy game, which, if you can get into it, and if RTS games are your cup of tea, will probably add significant value to the overall package, which is otherwise made up of mostly arcade experiences that you can jump straight into. In the case of Metal Marines, 
you really can't just jump straight into it. There is definitely a learning curve to this game, and it being an older RTS game, you'll probably feel quite clueless as to what you're supposed to do when you first boot it up. Within a few minutes of experimentation, you can start to get a sense of what you need to do and how to strategize, but it isn't instantly pick up and play. If real-time strategy isn't your thing and you want some more instant action from a shooting game, you have a couple of choices on this collection. Xevious is a top-down scrolling shooter, which is a load of fun. I did, however, find that this was a game where I was quite quickly relying on the save states to progress, as it was super challenging super quickly. Definitely a product of its time in this regard, but also very playable. Star Luster is the final game on the cartridge, and is a cockpit first-person space shooter. Think like an older school Star Fox. Strangely, it also had a map system where you choose where you fly to to each stage and battles in a very similar way to Star Fox Command on the Nintendo DS. So who knows if that was just common on these type of games, or if Star Fox was influenced by this in some way. Gameplay-wise, you have two phases to the action. The first is where you choose a location on your on-screen map to fly to, and once you are there, you can then look above the map to the view of space where you shoot at enemies. Considering the age of the game, it has to be said that the effect of it being 3D, when all that happens is that the dots representing stars are stretched out as lines to give a sense of movement, it's all very, very impressive. Gameplay and controls feel great, and it was one of my favourite experiences in the collection. Overall, the Namco Museum Collection 1 is a fun and varied collection of retro classics, and it's exactly what the Evercade was designed for. As a cheap cartridge that many Evercade owners who got the premium or 10 cartridge bundle editions of the machine will already have, it's a great collection which is highly recommended for retro fans. If you're not into retro classics from this era, this collection is unlikely to win you over, and there are other carts on the Evercade which have a more modern flavour. But with Pac-Man and Galaxian alone, this is a must-have for the retro-inspired handheld. So that's all from me, do make sure you smash that subscribe button here on the Extreme Improv Extremes channel. If you want to check out the written review of the Namco Museum Collection 1 then make sure you head over to www.extremed.tv and make sure you check out all of the other videos and shows that we have coming up every single week. Till next time, ciao for now and always stay extremed.